my name's Adam, and uh, as Nidin said, we're on to the fun stuff now, so hopefully a bit uh, more lighthearted than the uh, death and wills. We're not going to be talking about that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be talking about residential property development. Uh, so um, property development is a very lucrative um, wealth creation strategy, if you do it right. But if you do it wrong, you can lose money. So. What I wanted to do tonight is show you a brief case study of a project we're doing at the moment and talk about the three top things that I do in my projects to make sure that we make money and we don't lose money. So just a little bit about me. I've been a property developer for 12 years now. I'm the Managing Director of Develop Capital and we are a residential property development company. Um, we only do residential development and we do most of our developments as joint ventures. So we work with some people who might want to put in cash or some people that put in borrowing capacity and then they get a share of the profits. Uh, we currently have 12 projects underway, uh, over 40 investment partners we work with, uh, about 26 million of GRV and over $4 million of projected profit. So um, we're busy and uh, we're doing some really good projects. So I just wanted to go through a case study, um, show you a bit about an example of uh, a property development, and just talk about um, some important aspects around how you ensure your developments are profitable. So this is the strategy that we follow. We do carefully selected, professionally executed residential developments. And what that looks like is we like sites where we can uh, retain a house, we like to target areas with very good amenity and good demand from owner-occupiers and that are also affordable. The reason we do that is that owner-occupiers pay more than investors because they buy emotionally. Um, and we subdivide and build two or three new houses. So I want to just show you an example of a project we have underway. This is one that we're doing in Mount Rolling. So as I said, the plan is keep and renovate this house, and then build two new houses. So an example next door, looks something like that. So we bought this site in 2020 uh, when COVID was underway. We have done our subdivision, we have renovated and sold that house, and we're currently constructing our two new houses. So this has been a really great project for us. Um, we purchased it for 951,000, we have sold the existing house earlier in the year for 955000 so for more than we bought the site. So yeah, I was delighted when that happened because when you've already cleared what you paid for the site and you've still got two houses to build and sell, then you know you're on to a winner. <laughs> so uh, yeah, forecast profit is looking very healthy. Uh, this one has taken a little bit longer than we would usually expect. We usually our projects are about two years, but with COVID building boom, there's been a lot of delays, uh, but that's okay because the market has also gone up. Um, and as I said, we work with investors, so some people are putting cash and they're looking at a return there, and uh, one person is the loan guarantor, and they get a share of the profit as well. Um, so I want to dig into this and explain how we found the site and what the key things were to allow this project to come together. So I'll start with why Mount Lawley? How do we find this? So the first aspect, and this is probably the first tip, is to make sure you always buy in a really good area. So, and when I say good, I mean the market. So a market that is buoyant and will hopefully grow during your development. So we start with the qualitative aspects of an area. We love areas with really high amenity uh, and great demand from owner occupiers because they're great places to live. So Mount Lolly is a good location. Everybody knows of Mount Lolly. 4K is from the CBD, uh, near the beach and the river. Uh, good schools, very nice leafy uh, parks and things nearby. And this particular site is on Walcott Street. It's only about 800 metres from the Beaufort Street uh, entertainment area. So it ticks all the boxes from that perspective. The second part of finding an area is making sure that the market fundamentals and numbers make sense. So what really attracted us to Mount Lawley at the time we bought was this was 2020, and we could see a trend of prices rising and sales volumes. 
rising as well. So that got our attention. We could see a good trend that was suggesting good market growth. We're also always very <coughs> focused on supply and demand. If we're going to build new houses and renovate houses, we ideally want to do that in a market with very little supply, very little competition. When we bought this site, there was only one renovated house for sale in Mount Lolly, because we'd come out of a slow number of years in Perth in 2020, if you remember, the market had been slow. People weren't subdividing and renovating and building. So only one for sale, but we'd seen six sold in the last six months. So definitely demand there, but very limited supply. Even more exciting, no new houses for sale uh, that were comparable to what we were going to build. Um, so that ticked all the boxes. Yeah, we, we figured we were onto a winner. Uh, in hindsight, it's been great. We've made about 30% market growth since we bought this site. So that was my first tip about buying in a good area. Um, now I want to talk about how we found the actual site. So we always look for the sites that everyone else overlooks. That's where the best deals are. So you know, the, the saying up there, is what we look for. So I'll just explain why nobody wanted to look for this site. Um, the first thing was owner occupiers. And this site did not present very well at all. You can see overgrown, bad street appeal. Yeah, you can't even really tell. This is walking up to the house. You can't even tell where the entrance is. Uh, overgrown at the back. Um, very bad layout, which I'll talk about in a second. Yeah, that's the kitchen. That is a tiny kitchen. I couldn't even imagine trying to cook in that. And the, the reason the layout was bad is this property was being used by a psychiatrist for medical purposes. So they configured it for a medical office, which meant big consulting rooms, a waiting room, tiny bathroom, tiny kitchen, and a storeroom. So how could you walk in there and even see yourself living there? It wasn't clear what the bedrooms were, um, or where, you know, tiny kitchen, no one wants to live in that. Um, and they're asking, what do we pay for this? 951000 So it's not a cheap house. So owner occupiers were not interested. The second potential buyers for this were other developers. Interestingly, with this site, other developers were not interested. So part of that was to do with circumstances. So I said we bought this around COVID times. So we all remember the fear when COVID first hit. I remember for me, it was not something I thought was I thought it was just another one of these bird flus or something like that that we don't pay attention to until the moment I realised we were a bit in trouble. <laughs> I was just looking at Neil, I remember Neil went on holiday and yeah, I think he got home pretty quick <laughs> before he got locked out. Um, and in terms of the market, volumes dropped while this was happening. So developers were pretty wary. Um, in many ways it reminds me a little bit of what's happening at the moment in the market. People are a bit wary about interest rate rises, but for us at COVID and also now, we're looking at the market fundamentals, supply and demand, turnover, and we're pretty confident in what we see. Uh, so we're happy to move ahead. Uh, the other thing with this site, it's zoning allows you to build apartments. Uh, we chose not to develop to that density because of what I said before about the shortage of newer townhouses in the area. So that was another mistake people were making. I wouldn't have done apartments here. It was not the right time to do that. So because it was overlooked by both, we got it for a good price and um, got ourselves a good deal. So that's a very important thing to remember, you, especially on occupiers. You can't afford to compete with them because they'll pay far more than makes sense for you as a developer. And my final tip is about keeping the existing house. So I mentioned that as part of my strategy earlier. Uh, that is something that I do on nearly every deal. A lot of developers on smaller deals like to knock the house down. The um, reason I like to keep the house is it doesn't cost a lot of money to renovate compared to build. You know, we might have spent $100,000 on this reno versus building a new house, like a single story house, would cost probably about $350,000 in today's market. Uh, yet in about five months, we were able to renovate, uh, a few more months to get our titles, and uh, we added a lot of value very quickly. As I said, it had been about, we sold it for 30% higher than what we'd originally projected because of market growth. We sold it for more than we bought the site for, and that allowed us to release a lot of equity and uh, return some capital to our investors and uh, go ahead with the build. 
So I uh, just want to show you some photos of the finished product because that's always exciting to see. So we changed the front, now it looks like a house. You can see the lovely character, much better than the overgrown thing that we started with. Now it looks like a house. It's not just a consulting room. Um, lovely big bedroom, master bedroom, lovely ensuite, and a lovely deck out the back. And there's actually city views over here photo was taken at that angle, but here's a construction site at the moment, so that's why we didn't do it. But um, yeah, now it's a house that people were very keen to buy. We had dozens and dozens of people through and multiple offers and got a great result. So those are my three tips on development. Um, I've already been given a two minute warning, so unfortunately we're out of time. Uh, but what I wanted to do was for anyone who, maybe this is grab your interest and you have further questions and you want to know more, uh, I'm going to be holding a boardroom session on Zoom where we can go into this deal in a bit more detail, um, unpack it and answer any questions you might have about developing. Or if you are interested in possibly being an investor, either cash or boring capacity, then that's something we can also explain as well. So I'll just grab the handout and show you how you can jump on board there. You'll see in your folders there's a little um, sheet with everyone's details. Next to my name, there's a QR code. If you just scan that in, that'll take you to the web link up there and fill in a form and that will register you and we can send you some further details. I will just explain, you might think it's September, why are we waiting until October to do a boardroom session? I'm going away to Europe for a few weeks, I leave tomorrow, so unfortunately we'll have to wait. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested to find out more, register on there, and I look forward to talking to you at that session. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Can I just ask a quick question? You, I, I, I remember you mentioned a 54% return there on this project. Is that true? Yes, yes. Yeah, this one's been great. We're very happy. So 54% so return, Adam got, and that was on the house you flipped. Yeah, that's for those who have cash in this project, yes. Yeah, and you do this for investors. That's right, yeah. So we, yeah. we find sites, we run projects, and people can invest in those projects, we do all the work, and then we share the profit at the end. And Adam also runs a very successful Facebook group called a Property Developers. Uh, uh, Perth Property Developers. Perth Property Developers. Uh, please find that uh, group on the Facebook and join that. You will find a lot of very valuable information very regularly on that group. Yep, and we're a great network. We have all the speakers at the front of yep. part of it, including Nidham and yep. a few other people in the audience. Thanks. It's just there for property people to, to, to connect. We run events and uh, the group's there. If you have any questions, there's always people to answer and, and share ideas with. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.